Now, for our next session, I would like to introduce Mr. Alexander Holt, the head of international ecosystems for the Scottish Government. He'll, you know, walk you through a session on climate crisis action through cross-border collaboration and entrepreneurship. We live in an interconnected world. Collaboration is the only way forward. My name is Alexander Holt from the Scottish Government. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for giving up your precious time now, here live in Dubai, uh, and for COP28, and for those online watching. So today is about collaboration. And this notion of collaboration and entrepreneurship in the role of them in climate action. So, some context. I'm standing before you because I work for the Scottish Government, but I'm also part of a network of government, academic and not-for-profit teams around the world under the GovTech Global Alliance. And this is about helping startups collaborating with government. Our members span across the globe, from North America, South America, across Europe, and Africa, and Asia, Australasia. And our purpose is simply, really, to help government deliver better public services, but also give companies that platform for economic development. We group together, and this is the third iteration of a groundbreaking, award-winning program that we've run first for COP26 in Glasgow, then for COP27 in Egypt, and now COP28 here in Dubai. And so what you'll see today is a, a selection of startups that we selected from around the world to be part of a program. And essentially, we were there to source, surface, and scale climate tech solutions for global public sector application. So today you'll see rapid two and a half minute presentations from a selection of our companies uh, and then uh, giving their overview of how their solution addresses climate crises. But my ask to you is this, that you in the room and online, you might not be the right person to speak to, but I absolutely bet that in your network there is the right person to speak to. So I ask is come and speak to us afterwards, have a chat with the companies, find out more. And I also pleased that I think um, at the end of the session we'll have a special guest, assuming they arrive just in time, but more on that later. So, the first of our uh, companies, uh, and I'd be delighted to welcome the architect of the SDGs, uh, Puran Desai OBE, uh, to come and um, give his overview. Uh, and we live in this interconnected world, and who better than Puran to give his take? Puran, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Alexander, for inviting me here and to the Scottish Government and to the CivTech Alliance. Um, my name is uh, Purin Desai, and I think if I... The big green button, good. Um, oh. um, as Alexander was saying, we live in an interconnected world, and we, um, we're really starting to recognize the importance of that. Um, we have a climate crisis, we know that, but we have lots of other crises and sometimes that's called a polycrisis. And yet, we're tearing our hair out as a society trying to deal with issues in silos. So we might try and solve the cost of living crisis in a way which just makes the climate emergency worse. So absolutely, we have to change the way we, we think. Um, and can we then take a deep breath, 
look at how different issues are interconnected, come up with what we call shared outcomes, and then collaborate across traditional silos, public sector, private sector, uh, voluntary sector, on those shared outcomes. Uh, and um, my background is actually in neuroscience and medical sciences, but I've worked in sustainability for about uh, 30 years or so. And this platform is inspired by deep neuroscience and, and the work of people like Dr. Ian McGilchrist. If you haven't heard about him, please do look him up. Many people, including me, think he's going to be as important as Charles Darwin in de defining a paradigm. Um, but uh, the platform um, is a mechanism for uh, um, allowing massive cross-sector collaboration, which we hope to really scale very rapidly in 2024 and get that systems change, systems transforma transformation we need across all different systems simultaneously. Uh, so I've been in sustainability for 30 years. Uh, I created a framework called One Planet Living uh, with support of other organizations, including WWF, uh, and in fact uh, led an initiative which worked around the world, applying it across all sectors. Uh, and we brought our different partners together um, with the Colombian government to propose what became the UN SDGs. So as Alexander said, I'm very proud. I, I created the framework on which the SDGs are based. Um, but what's our new reality? Well, we know we are crossing climate tipping points and all those different ecological systems are interconnected. We need to think in this interconnected way. We need to think about how what we build determines how much we use our cars, uh, how that affects our health, how it contributes to climate change, supports the oil industry, which also creates single-use plastics, which end up in the oceans, uh, f um, you know, filling our fish up with plastics, uh, affecting our health, but also affecting biodiversity around the world. And that interconnected thinking is going to need different interconnected tools for us to, uh, um, to understand, manage, and then collaborate around those shared outcomes. So, um, uh, you know... We're, we're really excited to be part of this program and looking at scale up, so please do look at uh, joining up your project strategies internally and externally. Um, we want to work very closely with uh, government. We're working with local government in the UK, but we're wanting to start to work with central government in the UK and with governments around the world. And let's all start getting into this systems thinking uh, perspective, and, and that's how ecosystems work, and that's how we'll integrate ourselves back into the ecosystems on which we depend for our survival. So thank you very much. Purin, thank you very much. So, and it's great, I just can't emphasize, you know, when you get to know Purin, some of the deep thinking of the past 30 years, and what it took to put the SDGs together, it's quite a conversation, so do catch up with him afterwards. So, the next one is actually a video, and uh, Darren Wolfberg from Triangle Systems in Bermuda, and it was great to see the minister uh, for, um, from Bermuda earlier, uh, and this is a platform uh, which takes uh, digital assets, or rather uh, physical assets, and creates financial packages around them. Now, I have to say in advance, he speaks very quickly, so it might na need a rerun uh, when you look at our website. So, Hello, my name is Darren Wolfberg. I'm co-founder and CEO of Triangle. Triangle is a digital finance platform for sustainability and infrastructure finance. Not until climate and finance can speak the same language will there be a solution to the climate problem. Climate is a big data problem, and that's why we have such an issue with greenwashing and the regulatory and compliance risk. The sustainability link bond market growing from 50 billion in issuance in 2018 to 3 trillion uh, at the end of last year is because of the cost of borrowing benefit, 74 basis points currently. The data complexity of TCFD, moving information from one database to many in scope three and receiving uh, information from many into one is the challenge and that is something we have solved. Banks and asset managers, $115 trillion of assets under management now have this compliance. $87 trillion of commercial lending now has this compliance. Today we're at a $3 trillion greenwash world on our way to $50 trillion by 2025. Asset OS is a managed platform for big data aggregation. We sell to banks, asset managers, enterprises, and climate solution providers. Our kit takes smart meters and IoT sensors, combines it with blockchain, digital finance, and an infrastructure construct. Asset OS connects big data sources with real world assets. We take asset information like loans, properties, manufacturing plants, combine that with utility bill and IoT sensor information in our asset factory in order to create a digital ID. Each digital ID is a digital twin of that asset. 
that digital ID delivers a uh, market data feed of economic, operating, climate, and insurance information in a market data construct, providing data verifiability, reduced cost of bartering, and is much more cost-effective and scalable than APIs. Our digital IDs are delivered through our cloud, uh, and we deliver a Scope 3 superpower. Our climate finance offering includes a three-part kit, TCFD climate compliance uh, for uh, uh, adding your vendors, adding your bills, uh, again, whether a portfolio is five assets, 500 or 5,000 or more, uh, it's a ledger that runs the math for scope one and scope two. Sustainability linked underwriting platform where data from assets in the field flow back into the portfolio uh, and are able to uh, show the performance information, the revenue, the cost savings, the carbon impact, uh, and so on. The carbon credit market we're very excited about. We have two trades uh, right now, 300,000 tons of methane capture indicated at $30 per ton, 100 million tons of carbon credit from rainforest assets indicated at $13 per ton. We became one of the first broker dealers globally permitted to issue and sell digital assets. We're operating in banking, carbon credits, capital markets, and asset management. Uh, $200 trillion economy sits on the other side of this, and we're delivering the toolkit in order to get us there. Again, banks, real estate, asset management, and governments, that's who we're trying to hit. Uh, my name's Darren Wolfberg. Please reach out if you have any questions. Thank you. Uh, a, a whip through uh, of uh, those uh, complex uh, financial management systems. It is worth taking a look afterwards and, uh, and finding out more from Darren. And just that point there about Bermuda. Bermuda has the tightest, some of the tightest financial regulations in this association. So uh, focusing on those, um, uh, on those countries with those tight financial regulations, being able to adhere to them, I mean, this system is, has been trained on very much the, 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 the tightest regulations. So we've started in the UK, we've gone to Bermuda, we're gonna continue west, and we're going to go to Brazil where uh, um, the next company uh, taking his passion uh, from swimming in the sea as a child for his passion to helping others and seeing nature-based uh, solutions uh, come together. Um, please welcome from Algas, Brazil, uh, Adriano, Claudio. Thank you, Alex. First, uh, thank you for coming. I would like to, to share with you a, some, a very important moment, not just for us, for the world. What you get today is something really interesting. interesting. Um, I'm Adriano. I'm August Brazil business director. And we have a dream talking about the agriculture of the future. How can you make it more efficient? How can you improve soil health? How can you increase agricultural productivity in a sustainable way? I think we can help. August Brazil is a biotech company committed to uh, promoting, I mean, to um, committing to preserving nature and promoting the blue bioeconomy. Our goal is helping to develop a sustainable and um, innovative regenerative um, agriculture for the, uh, using the potential of a seaweed. We know the Brazilian market faces, the Brazilian agriculture faces challenges. The agriculture, we know the Brazilian Agriculture faces challenges, such as the dependence on imported chemical fertilizers, which represent 94% of the sector's demand. We're talking about the fourth uh, uh, market, the agriculture in the world. It's with five million of hectares. It's a very huge mark. It's a very huge um, agriculture. To address this issue, we develop biofertilizers made from seaweed. These products are, are renewable 
and a sustainable alternative that help to re regenerate the soil, to reduce important chemical fertilizers, and offer a many other benefits. Carbon sequestration, increased crop productivity is 30% more efficient. A positive socioeconomic impact um, generating income and um, employment for the coastal communities and improve food quality w with less chemical residues. In addition, the, ex the, the carrageenan extracted also from the seaweed can apply in many other uh, markets such as bioplastics, pharmaceuticals, cosmetics, and many more. As you can see, we are committed to contributing to the transformation of the Brazilian and the global agriculture, offering innovative and sustainable solutions. To learn more and know more about our product, service, and solutions, please contact us or search for Algas Brazil. That's it. Thank you. Adriana, thank you very much. Um, so, our next uh, presenter, we go back to Europe and to Hungary. Uh, thank you. Where here, again, pursuing a childhood dream, uh, growing up on a farm, recognizing the challenges that that all brings, and then to come on and build a company, straight having just this week raised 2 million euros for his startup. Uh, please welcome Donat Posta from SmapLab. Forty percent of the total agricultural yield lost due to insects and diseases. It means more than $290 billion loss for the farmers, for us, in each year. When I was a child, insects swarmed once a year in our farm. This year, in 2023, it was three times, and the problem is getting bigger and bigger. My name is Donat Posta, and I'm the co-founder at SmapLab. We are provide scalable and affordable insect monitoring service for farmers to use the crop protection products efficiently and in a sustainable way. We are transforming the manual trap solutions that the farmers are already using in their field to digital ones and collect data all around the world. We developed AI image recognition and proprietary forecasting algorithm to help the farmers to use the crop protection products in the right time. We are utilizing the global insect data so, for example, using a few thousand traps data to predict the insect pressure of the European corn border anywhere in the world and helping the farmers to take the spraying before the insect causing the yield loss. We provide digital insect data globally as a service, like other uh, data providers provide weather data to the agriculture platforms. We are helping farmers more than 40 countries in the, year, in, the, in the world, and we are here to find the right global partners to accelerate our growth. Please help us to connect with crop protection companies, food and beverage companies, and Chamber of Agriculture representatives. SMAP Lab, smart plant protection. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well done. Uh, don't, and the the pointer, thanks, Javier. There, in terms of the crop recognition, your system now r recognizes 117 insects, of which there's about 10 that form 90%, 80% of the, the crop infestations. So incredible technology. So, uh, on to the next, where this is a video from Nigeria. And 
uh, Auntie Joseph is going to talk through uh, an award-winning compact farming system uh, that's really doing outstanding work for local communities uh, and, and urban farmers in Nigeria. And, uh, and the work they're doing with young people in educating. So it was a shame he wasn't able to make it here today, but I think this video will give a, a taste of his, his impact he's having locally. Hi, my name is Auntie Joseph. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Agricity. At Agricity, we provide innovative, sustainable agricultural education and hardware units for urban dwellers to grow their own foods for livelihood and subsistence while we raise the next generation of urban farmers using agroecological means. <laughs> we identify three major problems, which include increasing food costs, protein deficit and malnutrition, as well as youth, low youth interest in farming. We came out with three solutions to be able to solve this, which involves urban dwellers growing their own foods within the comfort of their homes, providing quality protein and nutritious food for themselves and their household, while we educate young people on smart agriculture. We started with the creation of our smart agro-pyramid system across urban houses, and we identified three major target customers, which includes urban dwellers who desire to grow their own food, schools who want to utilize our hardware solutions to be able to train the next generation about modern farming and help them understand the, the connection between food and our planet, and also Africans in the diaspora who intend to buy products from our systems to use as local delicacies. What we do, we provide hardware sales in which, which comes in both domestic and urban food production units in various sizes. Also, we actually provide urban farm setup, which are commercial aquaponics and hydroponics facilities on two plots in Abu. We further provide educational curriculum as well as school farms using the Young City Farmers Initiative. And here is a typical example of school farms we provided across various schools in Lagos State, Nigeria. And here are some few students producing their own foods themselves. Lastly, we offer as a service what we call farming as a service, which includes training and courses on our e-learning platform, our food growers, sales of inputs and supplies for both domestic and our commercial units, as well as farm workshops, tours and school excursions. We intend to raise between 60,000 to 100,000 US dollars within the next three months, which would help us generate about $1.5 million, having generated a revenue of $215,000 within the last 20 months. Meet our amazing team of co-founders. And here is the partners we've been working with over the last 20 months. And what we enjoy you is, we enjoy you to come work with us, partner with us, as we take this initiative to the next level. Supplying each household with our urban units, as well as educating the next generation of young sustainable farmers. Thank you. It's uh, it's been a delight getting to know the AgriCity team, and one of his colleagues, uh, Ine, is actually doing her masters in Edinburgh uh, as a master's, master's guard, master card scholar. Uh, so it's great to be able to have met up with her and understand more about their program. So. Uh, from here, we have we go to Egypt uh, with um, a no, we won't. We'll go to Italy first, uh, where um, we will um, delighted to welcome uh, on stage someone who has taken his passion for engineering, uh, taken it through student to build uh, through through studies to build a company. He's been. Uh, 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 awarded as uh, a young Italian changemaker uh, and also winner of the Italian energy giants, uh, any um, uh, latest 2022 climate energy uh, solution. So please welcome stage from Italy, Jacopo Cometti. Hi, everyone. 
if you look around the city, what you see is desert, a land that is not farmable anymore. But in this land, around this land, millions of people need to eat and drink every day. Due to severe uh, variability of the weather and the spike of desertification, all those people will be forced to move or face even greater consequences in the upcoming years if we fail to adapt to climate change. There are now numberless articles telling us uh, the effects and highlighting, highlighting the effects of climate change. But who are the real victims? The real victims are they, the countries from the global south who are feeling the impact of the in the consequence of climate change the most. I'm Jacopo Cometti, co-founder of WebStation, a platform that was created from the very need to optimize every, resource, every available resource. A WebStation is a platform that helps the farmers monitor their fields and efficiently manage uh, their resources. We proudly built our platform on three main principles. The first one is that WOP is a super user-friendly app. This means that any low-figure, uh, low-tech figure can interface uh, the platform. Second, we embrace sensorless technology, meaning that we only use satellite data, making our solution more scalable and cost-efficient. And third, we do not only provide data, but we give uh, contextualized information with everyday concrete um, tips and advices for the farmers. This is a demonstration of how the platform works. On the, oh, sorry. <laughs> On the left side, we see the um, fill part with the, the crops divided by type and color, while on the right side, we can see um, the informational part with the forecast, uh, the meteorological forecast, uh, the information about the company, the farming company indexes and also a heat map uh, visualization that was supposed to be shown, but apparently the video is not working. So, <laughs> okay, um, our impact. So, through our tests and studies, researches from entities like FAO or uh, the Bureau Veritas of Africa, uh, we found that um, basically fertilization, optimal fertilization and irrigation plants can increase the productivity, the yield of the fields up to 60%. So what's our role here? WOP, WOP's plan is to connect uh, companies, uh, corporates, uh, NGOs and government institutions to farmers in those endangered countries, providing them a software that is capable of stopping the, water, the um, resource wasting. So our call to action, what we seek from companies, from governments and from NGOs is uh, uh, their backing to help us deliver our solution to, um, to farming, farmers unions in those countries. Please feel free to contact us through our website or through our LinkedIn page. So this is our team. I'm Jacopo Cometti, CFO and sales. We have uh, our Eduardo Lecal, CFO and CTO, and then our Julia Cironi, our COO. What we've learned here in Dubai is that we like to think uh, to sustainability as um, a way for everyone to get equal opportunities, everyone and everywhere. Thanks. Jacobo, thank you. Uh, and the the um, thanks. the stats that they've been producing in terms of 30% reduction in water usage for farmers, particularly in arid regions within Italy. Uh, as they seek to then grow abroad. So it's a super talented team, as you saw from there. So on to the next. And we're just going to flip over to the other set of slides. There we are. Um, and I'm delighted to welcome to stage uh, a, a woman who, from growing up on a farm uh, in her teens, has taken that passion for food security and taking it to the Middle East and Africa. So please welcome the stage from Egypt, Nuran El Said, 
for a co-founder of Plug and Grow. Good evening, everyone. Uh, it's definitely a pleasure to be here. My name is Nuran Al Said. I'm the head of product and co founder of Plug and Grow. We are an agriculture technology company that supports decision makers basically in their transition towards more sustainable agriculture production or food production. So, um, hydroponics has been actually the fastest growing sector within agriculture since 2015 due to its numerous advantages uh, in overcoming the challenges facing food production and agriculture sector generally today. There's no doubt it presents a compelling argument uh, for food and water security. Looking at this, uh, at looking at the macroeconomic impact, we can see that transitioning 2,500 hectares uh, into hydroponic application, we can produce 2 million tons of food annually with a value of $1.2 billion. So let me say that again. Transforming 2,500 hectares into hydroponic application allows us to produce 2 million tons of food annually. But more importantly, the water saved can, in, can be diverted towards producing 700,000 tons of wheat or other strategic crops. So we can clearly see that there's an argument to be made for hydroponics. However, hydropon hydroponics comes with a set of challenges. This includes the limited access to know-how, it includes the process complexity, uh, and also high startup capital. Yet, <coughs> sorry. Yet, for us to make this technology the mainstream, we need to optimize it, standardize it, and productize it. With over 10 years, uh, over the past 10 years, our group has grown to serve the entire value chain from research and consultancy to implementation and market access, offering true and tested solutions uh, to the market that are able to overcome these challenges successfully and sustainably. With over, with over 28 commercial projects under our belt and 15 research and, com and academic projects um, from, <coughs> sorry, we have actually mastered the balance between technology, operational efficiency, and economics. We have also grown to be a preferred partner to many international organizations and a portfolio company of the EBRD. We have evolved from pioneering growers to innovators, shifting our focus to unlock the economic potential of hydroponics, which aligns seamlessly with the SDGs. We believe that we can overcome the challenges and provide, and provide reliable solutions. Sorry. So we provide governments and intergovernmental organizations with consultation and technical studies, pilot projects, and capacity building. We provide growers and agribusinesses with end-to-end -end services, essential products, software, and training. And currently, we're working with financial institutions to provide or facilitate access to finance for growers and also integrate with the carbon markets. If you are a decision maker, whether in a governmental entity or in agribusinesses, and you are interested in sustainable agriculture, we'd love to meet, connect, and discuss potential ways of collaboration. Thank you. and well done. Uh, that's great. So our final presentation for today, uh, and just to come back to, to Plug and Grow, and it was brilliant uh, sitting down with Mustafa and, and, and Niran last night, uh, understanding more about the spread of their business. It's a highly investable proposition, and the market figures there, just what the growth potential is, is enormous. So uh, uh, and, and a serial entrepreneur is um, passionate about what they're doing. So it was, a, it was a total joy to get to know them and meet in person, which is what the first time we've done uh, in the past few days. So we then come back 
to the UK, uh, where uh, I'm delighted to welcome someone who, his background, growing up on farm in uh, on his, his, his grandparents' farm in Zambia, sorry, Zimbabwe, and taking those learnings to the solution and system that he's developed now. So please welcome to the stage Tapua from Water Offsets. Hi, everybody. Uh, water Offsets delivers water resilience to high water stressed areas. And I bet you that every city, every country, we are now all water stressed because of climate change. So what have we done? In the UK, we've developed the first 800. This is the largest development that is zero water development. That development is only using 67 liters per person per day. We have also designed the first ecotourism development that's only going to be using 71 liters per person per day. These developments only use approximately 55 to 60% of what you typically use on any household or tourism location. We've given ourselves a challenge and we've looked at cities. Particularly, we've looked at Sao Paulo. The similar case can be applied to Dubai, Cape Town, any city in the world. And in any city in the world, we can save at least 20 to 60%. We do this by retrofitting existing tall buildings, like that one there, where we can take 1,000 buildings in Sao Paulo. If each and every one of them has got 200 flats, we can save a staggering 16 billion liters per year. Yes, in any city in the world, we can save you billions of water each year if you talk to us. What are the prevailing water issues? We have water stress, water pollution, a lot of urbanization, population growth, and also the need to grow industry. These big issues are continuously becoming much more problematic. And what have we done about it? We have set up AquaCity. AquaCity is a platform that facilitates the transfer of wasted water into a usable resource. We look into cities and maximize the surplus that is there within the cities. Particularly, we look at residential developments and also commercial installations where we can save anything between 20, 40, or 60 percent. The saving is traded via our platform, it's protected by blockchain you can actually see the transaction and there's transparency associated with this. We can deliver any house at 65 liters per person per day. That can also be applied to hotels. Our system has been run on several pilots in the UK and we've saved 48.1 million liters from a consumption of 127.5 million liters, which is about 34% reduction. So what has happened in the last two years? We launched in November 2021, and we've grown significantly. We have managed to design 4,000 net zero homes, and the projected income that's going to come from, from those houses are just over 20 million pounds. The company is a water tech company which is vertically integrated for the sake that we're delivering a solution, and we're not a merchandiser, we're not a wholesaler, we are delivering a package, we're delivering a system that covers software, hardware, and policy innovation as well. We anticipate that by 2030, we should be trading at 200 million pounds, which should give us a valuation of 2 billion US dollars. At that time, we want to be listed on the NASDAQ Stock Exchange so that we can deliver a lot more water resilient cities. So what is our ask? We are looking for 5 million US dollars so that we can grow the company and really go to NASDAQ as quickly as we can so that we can influence as many cities as we can. We now have a team of 10 in the UK, a team of 10 in Latin America. We are establishing another team in Cape Town shortly and we'll be delivering as many water neutral and climate resilient cities as possible. So if you're a council, local authority that really wants a genuine system that is purely financed by the private sector to make your city water resilient, please talk to us because our system actually facilitates that. Thank you very much for listening.
Well done, Tabua. Um, it's some great, amazing stats there. Uh, and I know the work they've started to do in Brazil uh, is really transforming the way they think about housing and development. So uh, our uh, special guest, unfortunately, um, wasn't able to make it, so I'm just going to skip past there. But I'm just going to wrap up by saying, you know, this, these work, this collaboration across governments, across teams, is not done alone. It's very much a team effort. And with my colleagues from the Scottish government, uh, I am uh, particularly grateful, obviously, um, with colleagues from Lithuania and the GovTech Lab Lithuania and the South Australian GoToGov and Lot14 precincts who have been super helpful uh, in helping getting this together. But also Innovate UK who have kindly helped uh, funding this as well. So our ask is come and speak to our companies, visit the companies here. We uh, have another showcase session tomorrow, 9.40 here uh, in Dubai, uh, and uh, which is plus four GMT for those watching online. And we look forward to welcoming you back here. But this is about climate tech action through, uh, through entrepreneurial collaboration. So thank you very much for your time just now. Please do come and speak to the companies.